Hey everyone, and welcome. Today, we're gonna talk about something small, something you might not even notice in a line of code, but that has a huge impact on making the web work better for absolutely everyone. Let's dive in. So picture this, you're using a screen reader to listen to an article and all of a sudden you hear the word voiture. What? Right, if the page is in English, that's how it might pronounce the French word for car, voiture. It's confusing, it's jarring, and it just pulls you right out of the experience. And that's exactly what happens when technology doesn't know what language it's supposed to be speaking. You can almost think of it as a digital accent problem. It's this weird communication barrier that we've created with our own tech. But here's the great news. It's a problem with a surprisingly easy fix. Now, the tools that get tripped up here are called assistive technologies. We're talking about things like screen readers, which are incredible pieces of software that turn text on a screen into speech for users who are blind or have low vision. But if they don't have the right clues, like what language the text is in, they just can't do their job correctly. And you can literally hear the difference. It's night and day. On the left, with no language tag, a screen reader just gives its best English guess. Hasta la vista. Kind of clunky, right? But on the right, once we tell it, hey, this is Spanish, you get a proper, clear, hasta la vista. The meaning is clear, and the whole experience is just smoother. So how do we make sure we're doing this right? Well, we don't have to guess. We follow the rules laid out in the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. You'll often hear it called WCAG. It's basically the official playbook for making the web accessible to everyone. And yep, it covers language. When it comes to language, WCAG boils it all down to two simple but really powerful rules. Let's break them down. Okay, rule number one is the big one. You have to declare the main language for the entire web page. Is your site mostly in English, German, Japanese? You've got to set that as the default right at the top so browsers and screen readers know what to expect from the get-go. And rule number two just builds right on top of that. If you switch languages, even for one word or a short quote, you need to flag that specific part. So you set your main language for the whole page, and then you just put a little label on any exceptions. Simple as that. All right, let's get practical. What does this actually look like in the code? We'll start with HTML, which, you know, is the fundamental building block of pretty much every website out there. To set the language for the whole page, it's literally just one tiny attribute on the main HTML tag. You just add lang equals English, or it could be lang equals D for German, lang equals S for Spanish. You get the idea. One little line of code and you've already followed rule number one. So what happens if you've got a German quote smack in the middle of your English page? It's super easy. You just wrap that quote in a tag, like a block quote, and add lang equals D. That's it. Now a screen reader sees that tag and knows, okay, time to switch to my German pronunciation for this part. And what if it's something even smaller, like just a single word? You can use a span tag for that. Here, we've wrapped the word Espanol in a span and told the browser that this one little word is Spanish. It's incredibly precise and just so easy to do. But hey, this isn't just a website thing. The exact same ideas apply to other files we use all the time, like PDFs. We need to make sure those are just as accessible. And in a tool like Adobe Acrobat Pro, you don't even have to touch any code. You literally just highlight the text that's in another language, you pop open the accessibility properties, and you choose the right language from a drop-down menu. The software does all the heavy lifting for you in the background. So we've gone through the what and the how, but I want to zoom back out to the why, because this is about so much more than just ticking a box on a compliance checklist. It's really about shifting from compliance to true inclusivity. Now, there is one interesting exception to keep in mind, words that have pretty much been adopted into the main language. Think about the French word rendezvous, or even a word like podcast. They're so common in everyday English now that they don't need a special tag. This rule is really for words that are still distinctly foreign. You know what's really amazing is the ripple effect of this one small change. I mean, yeah, it ensures correct pronunciation, which is huge, but it also helps create accurate Braille translations, it helps browsers display special characters correctly, it makes sure media players show captions right, it even helps dictionary tools give you the correct definition. It is a win-win-win all around. So really, it all comes down to this. Adding just a few characters of code can completely transform a confusing, frustrating experience into one that's clear and seamless. It's a tiny bit of effort that helps create a more inclusive web for everyone. 
So the only question left is, are you ready to add them?